Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be listening to the strategy commentary for a match of villainous that I did on the Let's Get Wicked podcast's channel. So if you haven't watched the match already, go ahead and follow the link down below. But without further ado, let's get started. Next game. Yeah. Nice one. <sighs> yes. Oh my that God. Was that was tense. Dude, Woo! Scar, man. It was good. Oh it was a good game. Thank you. That was, that was that. very well played. Um, yeah, that was fun. Wow. Um, I felt like I was making a lot of nice progress and then, uh, you know how it is with her fate deck sometimes. Yeah. I, <laughs> one of the things I keep forgetting about her is that, um, you know, if she doesn't have to take a bite, she can't actually kill anything. So mm. it was really nice to get rid of that one take a bite when I played Woodland Creatures. Yeah. yeah. I think you took, you took two during that game, I thought. Yeah, I took like, two during that game, that and that really move, set you back. You were, you know, a lot of people don't think of it like that, but that was really, that was slowing me down a ton. Because, yeah, I had to search for take a bites pretty much that entire game because I was either using them or losing them right. with, in a way that I didn't want to be losing them. So, yeah. I also have to give you props because I want one of the biggest things I see people make mistakes when they fate um, Scar is that like, let's say I have this hero over here. You might want to be tempted to put like a character here, like next to another character like this, stuff like yeah. that, or like where there's allies. So like Bonsai yeah. was here, but like that's Stampede fodder. So that was like really smart of you, even though Sarabi would have discarded Bonsai to yeah. play over there because this is another primary vanquish spot because of the move action yeah the, the stampede so um yeah dude that I was know. really it's, smart it's the thought process it's it, you know playing playing scar you kind of get that idea of like how they how they move um right. and scar is very much like on your turn you're pretty much moving allies every other turn mm -hmm. um and so you got to think like okay well these allies are not going to stay here and if you're putting them at a place where there's already allies I mean, you're basically giving him, you know, succession. I mean, right. so you want to try to separate the fates as much as possible with Scar, because that way he actually has to work to get to those locations. Yeah. Now, once you options. have stuff going out, it's completely cool to cover the board, because yeah. my number yeah. one thing I've always talked about in the podcast is the less options that you have, the harder it is for you to make any progress. Totally. Like, like totally. up front, if it's like this, you definitely want to make it spread out so stampede fodder and even stick with me can't be triggered yep stuff yep. like that um i think a big mistake on my end was actually leaving snow white here um i think that the very first time i went to the laboratory after i had got her out on the board i should have moved her over probably to the mine that way i could have cycled a little bit better yeah her more. um that initial mistake was extra bad when i decided i was going to kill her there and playing the actual huntsman there because yeah. then I was like, well, now it's not going to be worth it to move Snow White back over, then move the Huntsman over. And I didn't even need the Huntsman, but it really helps when you're playing a game where the economy is so low as, right. as Evil Queen. Because you want to try, you don't want to ever have like a huge pool of stuff. Um, you want to make sure that you're using it as you're getting it. That way you don't risk, you know, effects that take your power, effects that take your poison. I would try to use it as soon as possible because there's a ton of cards that are just like, there goes some poison. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I mean, it's it's hard up front when you're first playing the game because it seems usually the the two play a card spot with the three seems like a very valuable spot and you don't want to cover that. But yeah. like in what you were talking about with Snow White, like like you want especially because one of Evil Queen's weaknesses I found is that she can't fate very well early game, and if you're yeah. able to unlock the the dwarf's cottage and Snow White's not out yet, you really want to try to take advantage of trying to be able to use that extra fate action to start making some defense. Yeah, just own it. Um, totally, totally. Yeah. Because honestly, this could have been, it would probably be even a little bit more close if I had gotten at least one to two more fates on you. Yeah, um, it would have been a lot but I just, closer. I just could not do it because I had left her at this location. That's a huge mistake, I feel like. So yeah. I, I'm definitely seeing that now um, in, you know, on the outside perspective. I was doing that when you're in the game. Yeah, you know, when you're in the game, you're not thinking about that stuff. You're not really thinking about that that much, but it's good to learn for like next time, you know, like, 
I just love Evil Queen because I just love I, I just think it's so funny, dude. Her board is just crazy every game I've ever played with. Oh her. yeah, it's insane. Her board is just insane. She's got like all these things and there's like always at least four, you know, fates on the board and it's just it's so much fun to play her. Yeah. I uh I wish I could have just taken out Zazu quicker, but you playing Prophecy on him really halted that progress. That was like Yeah. Um, I actually tell people that I think early when people are playing Scar and they use like Long Live the King and they see Zazu, they might want to play him early just because of his benefit. But, mm -hmm. you know, even like when you're playing other heroes out and stuff, that instantly makes Sarabi um, four and yeah. that makes her a bit, a chunkier target to take out. And yep. like that automatically requires you to have more hyenas. And especially if Simba somehow gets played, you're gonna need to use at least three hyenas to, um, or no, you still use two hyenas, but like still, like the economy of everything just gets crazier. So totally. I just, I don't like playing, I usually don't play Zazu until I feel it's super necessary. Um, yeah. It's, I find, I find him a very risky card. Um, yeah. But he's super beneficial though, so. Yeah. Yeah, he can be, he's, he, he kind of makes things a little complicated because it's like, you know, every other hero gets the plus one but when they're at his location he's benefiting you right um so it's kind of it's it's a tough one you gotta you gotta be careful yeah but uh I'd say that's probably the big good thing. game that was a really good game yep. that was really yeah, fun was it's, it's, yep. it's awesome to finally actually play you and i'm looking forward to playing more now so i know it's yeah, really it's, cool it's, um it's super, super fun. let's do it again let's do it again well, thank you so much for listening in on our raw behind the scene thoughts, including our gameplay and each other's strategies. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe to both of our channels for more content in the future. Bonus points if you click the bell notification and comment what was the last game that you played. And with that, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's drop the beat.